Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another Children's Church video. Uh, we're happy to uh, be there together with you in your home, watching on your iPad or your computer or something like that. Uh, when we get started here, uh, today we're going to start with a quick game, but before we play that game, go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter 4, verse number 24, and we'll start our game. Here's the game. Okay, we got to go really quickly through this game, but we're going to have three items that you need to guess uh, the right item guess the correct item this first item i will give you a couple hints it is a piece of sports equipment that's the guess that's the first hint the second hint is it is a type of ball and the third hint the last hint is it is the ball for my favorite sport so if you know the answer go ahead and shout it out if you shout it out football you are correct give yourself 200 points for that the next item we need you to guess is not actually an item it's a crayon but i want you to guess what color the crayon is and i'll give you one hint it is my favorite color if you know the answer shout it out if you guessed the color green you are correct that is my favorite color and that is the color of that crayon even though the wrapper was yellow last last item to guess okay this is a toy that lives in my office and is there for when uh sophia and thomas come uh, over and need something to play with give you two hints number one it has a lot of different parts to it and the hint number two is it is featured in the toy story movies so if you guessed a uh, mr potato head you are correct give yourself 200 more points if you got all three of them correct you got 600 points if you didn't get any correct go ahead and give yourself 200 points quick shout out to grayson for uh guessing where we were located in our last video if you can look behind me and tell where we are on the campus of our church go ahead and let me know if you know that answer you're there in john chapter 4 verse 24 before we look at that one thing that you all use and you're using right now is your eyes. You are looking at the screen and you are able to see the ball, the crayon, the Mr. Potato Head. And our eyes are a really great blessing from the Lord. And there's lots of things that we can see. But did you know there's also lots of things that we cannot see? One of those things would be really tiny microscopic things like bacteria or some of those things you've learned about in your science class. You can see them through a microscope, but we can't see them just with our normal eyes. But another thing is the wind. Last week I got to fly a kite and I didn't get to see the wind, but I got to see the results of the wind. The wind lifted that kite up. I was able to see the wind and you can see it through the trees and as it's moving different things as a breeze goes by, but none of us can actually see the wind. And in John chapter four, verse number 24, we see something else that we cannot see. The verse says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. The Bible says that no man has seen God at any time. You know, we cannot see God physically with our eyes, but we can definitely see the results of him. Just like we can see the results of the wind, and even the wind right now is blowing pretty strong. We can see the results of the wind, even though we can't see the wind itself. Well, we can see the results of God, even though we cannot see God physically. One of those things would be in creation. We look around us, we see the trees, and we see different plants and animals, the sun, the moon, the stars, all sorts of different things that God has created that show us that he exists and that he loves us. Other things that I've seen in my own life, and maybe you have too, is that God answers our prayers. And if you've ever had God answer some of your prayer requests, you know that that's only God who can do that. And even though you can't see him, you know that he is there. One of those prayers that I have asked the Lord is uh, in regards to salvation. Salvation is one of those things that we talk about a lot at church, and maybe some of you know exactly what salvation is. But salvation is a free gift of God, and we need that gift because we have sinned. All the bad things that we do, they separate us from God. When they separate us from God, we can't get to heaven on our own. We can't have a relationship with God on our own. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Man, that's some bad news. But the Bible also says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has given us a gift by sending his son to die for us. And 
We are rejoicing today on Easter because Jesus not only died on the cross, but he rose again and he conquered death so that we can accept that gift of salvation. If you have any questions about what salvation actually means, let me tell you right now, before even this video is over, go and ask your mom, go and ask your dad, talk to someone there in your house and ask them if they can explain a little bit better about what salvation is. Now, if you're still with us and you know that you're a Christian, you've accepted Christ as your savior, let me ask you this. Can others tell that you're a Christian? People can't see that you've you know, obtained salvation. People don't know that you've accepted Christ unless two things happen. Number one, you can show people you're a Christian by telling them the good news about Jesus Christ. Have you told anybody about what Christ has done in your life? If you haven't, you should, but there's another way. The other way is you can show them, you can show them that you are a Christian by the good works that you do. Now remember, it's not our good works that gives us salvation, it's salvation that produces those good works in our lives. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So how about it, Christian? Are you showing people that you are a believer in Christ? Well, how do you do that? Well, you do it by being kind to your brother and your sister. You do it by obeying your parents. You do it by being thankful for everything that God has given you and not complaining and having a bad spirit. And so we need to make sure that just like we can see the results of the wind, we see the results of God working in our lives. We need to show others that Christ lives within us. Thank you for joining us today for our children's church time. If you know where we are located, go ahead and uh, comment below, or you can have your parents email or text me and uh, give a guess of where you think we are here uh, on the campus of our church. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.